The Great Step, millenniums of events, hundreds of nomadic tribes and people. They lived, worked, made discoveries, conquered large tracts of lands, and left us some mysteries. To learn more about it, watch the project called Enigma of the Great Step. The Turanian Tiger. Today, for many, it sounds like a tale, a legend. But 100 years ago, people of Lake Balkhash and Ili River Basin were afraid to encounter this predator, and they had all legitimate reasons for it. Why the steppe tiger was called Turanian? Where did this pride and danger of Central Asia come from? What are Central Asian Jolbarises, and why did they disappear so quickly? How the Turanian tiger's lot was influenced by Bukhara deer and the resettlement policy. Turan country. Its history has been covered with myths and legends for ages. It was a land of strong and independent nomads, lords of the Great Steppe. They inhabited vast lands on the north of Amu Darya, almost the entire territory of modern Central Asia. They refused to serve to Iranian monarchs and fiercely attacked their cities, hiding in the steppes from Persian war conquest and aggression. There is a big old Persian epos telling the story about centuries-old conflict between Iran and Turan, sedentary and nomadic people. From time immemorial, the Turanian tiger had been the most dangerous predator of the Great Steppe. Fast, deadly, unpredictable. It embodied all the qualities that, according to ancient Persians, Turanian people possessed. Felis tigris, or as Kyrgyz call it, Yul Bars, can be found in the southern part of the steppes, especially in the reeds near the Aral Sea and Sira and Kuvana rivers. It possesses somewhat tremendous power. It can easily throw over horses and kill camels effortlessly. People have always been frightened by tiger's power and might. This was reflected in mythology and arts of ancient nomads. Image of a feline predator was among the most popular ones. There were lots of wall paintings and jewelry featuring Turanian tiger. According to historians, only the privileged classes had the right to wear clothes featuring tiger images. Let's find out if this was the case. Yes, we see it everywhere. The thing is that they were worshipping the tiger. They would add wings, deer-like horns to its image, attribute to it certain positive qualities. Tiger was their totem, their state symbol, if you like. Representatives of the elites and high-class people used to wear clothes that were decorated with the images of feline animals, including tigers, snow leopards, and so on. Different fantastic animals. In 2010, Arman Beysenov's archaeology team has discovered in central Kazakhstan a 7 to 6th century BC Kurgan that they called Taldi II. As many other ancient tumulus, it was raided by its contemporaries, but either due to their negligence or hurry, raiders left some treasures behind. Thus, archaeologists found some fine golden jewelry and small badges in the shape of tigers. Scholars were curious. What kind of clothing was decorated with tiger badges? Who was wearing it? Not everyone had a right to wear clothing with tiger images on it. We can see that clothes with these images belong to privileged people, royalty, and so on. These badges were made of gold. The production of these small details was expensive and intricate, but they were making them like this anyway. So we can assume that they were considered a state symbol or something of the kind. Things that were found in Taldi II, Kurgan, and central Kazakhstan were not enough to fully reconstruct a feline predator outfit, 
and understand to whom it might have belonged. Krim altin and his team got in touch with Russian colleagues who were lucky enough to dig out, untouched, Arjan II tumulus in Tuva that belonged to the same period, early Iron Age, and that had lots of tiger jewelry inside. Who they belonged to? Who was the tiger among those people? There were lots of tiger's images on almost every single item, especially on weapons and clothes. There were two people buried in Arjan II Kurgan, a man and a woman, and according to anthropologists, they were dressed in some luxurious clothing. Nothing has left from their attires. They have decayed because they were all made of organic fabrics. The golden accessories that decorated their outfits were still there. And according to how these jewelries were placed, it seemed they were decorating the clothing on the front, on the back and on the sides. The accessories were made in the shape of small tigers and were placed in a specific alignment. All those small tigers were aligned to create a shape of a bigger tiger. We were studying how tigers' images were used in soccer arts, and soon we realized that there were plenty examples of it. Why was it spread so widely? For starters, the tiger inhabited the same areas where Saka tribes lived. Also, as it was a big predator, it was worshipped by locals. In early nomads' mythology, animals were divided into two big groups, predators and non-predators. And the constant battle between predators and their victims was depicted as an example of the dualism of this world, conflict between evil and good, light and darkness. And there has always been this cycle to it. Light will always come after a dark night. Spring will change cold winter. And same with the predators and their victims. They were fighting in the same manner the seasons were battling each other. That's why this depiction of the conflict between predators and their victims was so widespread. Also, the tiger was a warlike and royal symbol. It usually was depicted on weapons and certain items that belonged to royalty. Krim Altinbekov's team meticulously studied tiger's images in Saka arts, reconstructed tiger outfit, and made a collective image of Saka Tsar, ruler. It can now be seen at Kazakh National Museum. Made by ancient nomads more than 3,000 years ago, it still attracts people's attention and amazes visitors. It is seen that everything was made for a reason. Tiger's paws were clasping warrior's chest and back, its head was placed on one of the sleeves and its tail was on the other. And when a person was moving, his clothing was moving too, and so was the embroidered tiger. And that was a spectacular view. We even once tried to put this outfit on one of our colleagues, and when he was moving, we all felt as if the tiger was moving, nodding its head, waving its tail. That was awesome. Imagine when a person was riding a horse, bathing in sun rays, golden badges reflecting light. That must have been an incredible impression that person was making wearing this clothing. I think it was absolutely tremendous. According to one of the versions, striped fur was the reason local Turkic people named Tiger Jol Baris, Jul Baris, Yul Baris. In Turkic, Yul Yul means striped, so Jol Baris can be literally translated as striped panther. The Turanian tiger was a spectacular animal, not just because of its fur, but also due to its impressive size. I 
have in my possession skin of the tiger killed on the riverside of Seir. It is as big as two and a half arshins from ears to tail, 1.25 arshins across its back, and it is three arshins long from its left front paw to claws of its right back paw. Kyrgyz people say that this skin is not among the biggest. And zoologists can confirm that. The Turanian tiger was just slightly smaller than its closest relative, the biggest feline animal in the world, a moor tiger. Certain species could be as heavy as 200 to 280 kilos. However, some reliable sources claim that there were species as heavy as 380 kilos. Whereas the tiger killed in Bazan Durrani in Iran was heavier than 400 kilos. That was a huge, mighty predator. Another version about origins of the word Jol Baris is related to Turkic word Jol, Jul, Yul, meaning road. Thus, Jol Baris can mean wandering panther. And that is accurate because Turanian tiger was a famous roamer. He could walk up to 100 kilometers per day. Its habitat was extraordinary big, one eighth of the entire species' habitat. The Turanian tiger's habitat included northeastern part of Turkey, all Transcaucasian countries, former Soviet states, northeastern part of Iraq, north of Iran, southern Caspian regions where Turanian tiger was first mentioned, floodplains of Tarim and Lop Nur, and all Central Asian republics. If not the entire region, but all the areas near Amu Darya, Sir Darya, and Ili rivers, south part of Balkhash, Alakol, and Black Irtish. The Turanian tiger was not merely an object of admiration and source of fear, but also a much desired prey for hunters and warriors. The Kazakhs, for instance, would cut tigers' claws and use them as amulet in their son's clothing to transmit predators' power and courage to the bearer. And magnificent tiger's fur was considered as a very precious present that was usually given to rulers and other important people. In 1883, researcher Gern was one of the first to write down about the cunning way of hunting down this predator. Hunters would wait for the beast near prey leftovers in a hideout, cage that was protected from all sides with kirigia, yurt's wooden bars. Kirigia were attached to pickets knocked into the ground. From inside of this cage, hunters would shoot into the tiger, and if the animal tried to attack them, they would kill it with spears or big daggers. Sometimes they would tie three kirigia bars together and attach connected sticks from above. On the top of this cage, they would attach felt. Up to 10 people could walk into this cage, all armed with guns or cold weapons. They would enter Tiger's lair, carrying this contraption. As for hunting, not just Isikul, but the whole Jitisu region can be considered as a hunter's paradise. The place is full of game, tigers, red deer, quails. But a man armed with a muzzle loader would be able to hunt boars only. Hunting tigers, bears, red deer, and argali would demand an experienced hunter. Tiger hunting was considered as a very difficult and extremely dangerous thing to do, even with a decent firearm. But for many, it was a challenge. Famous tiger hunter, Maltik, preferred to hunt this animal without using any contraptions or organizing teams, but armed with double-barreled shotgun only. He has killed 12 tigers, but the 13th fatally wounded the hunter. For a tiger, it is ridiculous to fight against a human, especially when he is not armed. Just one hit, and that's all. A regular tiger can be as heavy as 200 kilos. One hit of his paw will easily kill a man. Just one hit and he can break a man's spine. He can even break the bull's spine. 
And his fangs are deadly too. He can break any human's bone. The Turanian tiger has always been a dangerous predator. Over time, people started to inhabit his territory. It is understandable that everywhere where tigers lived in proximity to human beings, there has always been a problem with livestock. Wild animals were difficult to catch, so tigers were eating cattle, sometimes cows, but most of all horses and sheep. If we read travelers' memoirs about nature of Jitisu and Central Asia, we'll see that there were even more problems with tigers. Tigers living near Chu River attack livestock in winters, mostly cows and less often camels. A couple of tigers living near Karatal River, south of Lake Balkhash Basin, in 1905 killed approximately 30 camels and 100 horses. But was the Turanian tiger as insatiable as it has been described? According to some data, during one of the chases that was organized by military hunting team in Sirdaria, one tiger killed a boar and ate it in two days. And a mature boar can weigh up to 150 to 200 kilos, with an impressive appetite. Doubtless, the Turanian tiger was a worrisome neighbor for steppe dwellers. He was dangerous not just for cattle breeders, but for regular people too. Dear Prince Vasily Andreevich, in the end of 1849, Major Damas, acting head of the aerial fortification, has informed my predecessor that more than usual number of tigers has appeared in the vicinity of Kyrgyz villages. Apart from killing horses and other cattle, tigers would kill Kyrgyz people, as it turned out. Over 1848 to 1849, these animals have eaten up to 28 men. So why was the tiger assaulting people so actively? What was the reason it has decided to change its usual prey? How it was related to Russia's empire resettlement policy? So once southern regions of the great Jews became part of Russia, that territory soon was inhabited by people of Slavic descent coming from European parts of Russia, where the Ukrainians live mostly. And of course, agricultural authorities, resettlement authorities would settle people along the rivers and at the most fertile places. So they started plowing virgin lands, new settlements were founded, meaning the number of animals that once were tigers' prey was reduced, its hunting areas shrunk. It entailed the livestock issue. So the Turanian tiger, once a dangerous lord of the great steppe, nomadic symbol for leadership and power, became a problem that has only one solution, hunting groups. Anyone willing to participate in this great chase was welcome to kill these striped felines at any time, by all means. In 1870, the reward for one killed Joel Boris was 25 rubles. In the 20th century, 50 rubles. In 1929, 100 rubles. No one was thinking that the tiger is a dangerous predator. We need to get rid of it. Special brigades and regiments were formed. They were stationed in Sirtaria floodplains and were killing those animals in huge numbers. This 
This massacre was happening in Sirdaria floodplain in 1863 to 1864. Brigades were operating up until 1890. All these years the massacre continued. In Ili floodplain, or on the south of Lake Balkhash Basin, hunting brigades and military regiments were exterminating tigers approximately at the same period of time, and these groups here until the 30s. The Turanian tiger as a biological species went extinct rapidly. In 1867, Researcher Sivitsov was writing about his personal encounter with a tiger near Kora River. And in 1873, in the comments to his book, it was said that at present, Felis tigris doesn't exist in the areas named by Sivitsov. They are still present in very small numbers near the Ili River. Not just hunting, but conflict with the locals followed by mass shootings have influenced Turanian tigers' lives. Some people say that this steppe lord has disappeared in the same way as its favorite prey, Bukhara deer. We can't say for sure that the disappearance of Bukhara deer had an impact on the Turanian tiger extinction. That wouldn't be true. Near Ili River and south of Lake Balkhash Basin, the Bukhara deer went extinct in 1900s, whereas the Turanian tiger was living near Ili River up until 1947. 1948 was the year when the tiger has completely disappeared from the territory of Lake Balkhash Basin and Kazakhstan. In the 1940s, it disappeared from Sirdaria floodplain, in 1948 from Kazakhstan's territory. Main dish in Jol Baris diet was boar, an animal that is still a part of Kazakh fauna, meaning that food shortage wasn't the main reason for the tiger's extinction. So what is the reason why a moor tiger, the closest brother and relative, is still alive, while the Turanian tiger sunk into oblivion? I think that the Amur tiger lives in the places where it is more safe than here. Look at what we have here. Our tiger has lived in a narrow strip of riparian woodland. And when it attempted to walk out those woodlands and head to the mountains, it was walking in the open space and was ready to be chased and killed. I think Indian jungles are completely different. Tigers have places for hiding, but our riparian forests, although very thick, are relatively small, meaning tigers had nowhere to go. They would have to jump into the river or run in the open space. That's why I believe in less than 100 years, tigers went extinct. The Turanian tiger and Bukhara deer have inhabited modern Kazakhstan's territory for more than 600 million years, but their destinies were changed by armed men in less than 100 years. Once these lands were reclaimed, the Bukhara deer ceased to exist, and the last straw in its extermination in Kazakhstan, let's be honest, it was an extermination was the construction of Turksip. How many people, how many weapons, everyone needed to be fed. At that time, there were no restrictions. Everything was allowed. In 1902 to 1904, Bukhara deer was extinct in the Ili River Delta. In floodlands of the Sir Darya, small groups of this animal were still present until 1957. The man realized his mistakes, a tiresome work with species brought from Tajikistan allowed to reintroduce this animal in Kazakhstan. Now our country has the biggest population of Bukhara deer in the world. And maybe the same thing can once happen with the Turanian tiger. <laughs>